Tight line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana man. Line, trap line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens, that's how we live, and it sure feels fine. Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name's Rodney Dupree, and today we got a unique show for you. We're over at my friend Stoney Hughes' house, and we're going to slow it down a little bit. We're going to do a brisket show. We got some potatoes we cooking, we got some beans we cooking. We're gonna show you how to do some brisket, or at least how he does brisket. We're gonna do a little brisket 101. We're gonna bring it down a little bit and take our time. So Cajun living and cooking sick and start right about now. All right, y'all, here we are in the kitchen of Mr. Stoney Hughes. How's it going? Doing good, how are you doing? We've been dying to get together and cook a brisket for the people. That's right. And we finally getting to do it. Now, uh. Where are you from? Tell everybody where you from. From really South Louisiana, but right now I'm in Galvez, Louisiana. Um, and what you do for a living? Uh, I have a real job, but cooking is my thing. I love cooking. Awesome. So. And you've been cooking like me since you yeah, was... 25, 30 years. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And uh, today, y'all, we are cooking a brisket. And uh, most of our shows, if, you, if you've been watching, are uh, kind of high-paced, uh, quick... Uh, cookouts and everybody's in a hurry today we're slowing it down a little bit y'all we're bringing it down to the family and we're going to show you everything that we know about brisket absolutely everything that you know about brisket mm -hmm. now let's tell them where the brisket comes from and naturally it's from it's beef so it's from a cow mm -hmm. and this is the uh where does it come from it's kind of the chest part in the front leg um and uh, it it encompasses from the very front to right behind it so and this the point would actually be the, the the breast part and the flat would be coming okay. underneath that the, makes sense. The, the, the leg there. Mm -hmm. And you were saying that uh, it, it used to be a trash piece of meat. You could get a brisket for 25 to 35 cents a pound and the butchers were really just giving them away because they're, they're in, in one sense they're really hard to do but in another sense if you follow the process they're very easy to do. But a lot of people didn't want to, to take the chance on doing it and so they would give them away. And, um, but now that some of the competition shows and the cooking shows have oh, come yeah. out, now the brisket is, is more expensive than prime, prime steak. We so. know it's a good piece of meat. Right. Uh, it, to me, it's the closest thing to steak as you can Absolutely. get. Absolutely. With the flavor, especially on what would be considered the point, which is the most marbleized part of it. The flat is a very thin, uh, low marbleization, but the point has most of the flavor, which also comes the, the burnt ends and such. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Now, how big is this one? Um, this one is almost 17 pounds. Okay. And we'll probably cut off about three to four pounds of fat off of it. Okay. Well, let's get to cutting on. All right. Now, uh, you're going to not only season it, you're going to inject it and put a put a rub on it. Absolutely. Right. Um, I go for multi layers of flavor, and um, that's why I want to inject it also to help keep it moist, but to impart some flavor inside the actual meat. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all. We're going to let him get to cutting on this thing, and uh, we're going to show you what a trim brisket looks like. All right, y'all. We got it trimmed all up now, and I'm going to tell you what, bro. That is a fine-looking piece of meat. Yes, it is. It, uh, the marbling in it was pretty good. I liked the way it had the marble in it, and I'm, I'm satisfied with that. Now, something that we were talking about earlier is the fat versus no fat, mm -hmm. and this is no fat. And tell us a little bit about that. I uh, One of the complaints that I have when I'm cooking for people is that the brisket is fatty or greasy. And so I've just kind of developed a little system. When I cut it off, um, I impart the flavor through my rub and my injection. But I try to cut as much of the fat off. I leave maybe an eight to a quarter of an inch in spots around it to continue to keep it moist and, the mar and let the marbleization and my flavors work on the inside. 
Gotcha. Now there's really two parts to the brisket. Yes, there is. And tell us about the two different parts. Um, you have the, the flat part, which is maybe about an inch to an inch and a half thick. And then there's a piece of fat that goes through the center of it. And then on the other side is what's called the point. And the flat is very, very lean. And, but most of the flavor comes from the point and the marbling on the inside of the point. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So when we put this on the pit mm -hmm. is this going to be wrapped up or it's going to be no this will go on naked we're going to inject it and then we're going to rub it and then we just put it straight on the pit from there okay so the first thing we're going to inject it absolutely let's get a shot of that then it. all right now in your in, in your injection now you didn't just go out and buy something and inject no. this you created this i create my own uh rubs and my injections and um so give me a little bit of what you got in there. Uh -huh. You know what? Uh, I start off with uh, beef broth and um, some of the rub and the juices left over from another brisket that I've already cooked. Oh. And then I actually put two or three tablespoons of my rub that I've also developed in it also. And that's what you was telling me, ver roast versus... Uh... Right. Roast versus smoked. Um, basically, if you smoke a brisket, it's naked the whole time. Uh -huh. If you are actually roasting a brisket, you'll smoke it for six hours and then wrap it in tinfoil, um, put a stick of butter in it, maybe a cup of red wine, um, and then the rest of your mop, and then seal it up really tight in tinfoil, and then cook it the, con the rest of the hour and a half per pound at 225. Okay, and that, and when you roast it, that's when you get those juices you're talking about saving for Absolutely. the next you one. Save those for the next one. Um, you uh, you pull it out, and those juices you put into a grease separator, or separate it yourself. Put it in the refrigerator, pull the grease off of it, and um, and then just save those juices. Um, you were telling me you put it in an ice tray. I'll put them in an ice tray and um, save those if you ever want some flavor in a soup or something like that. If you're making anything and you want some pure beef concentrate pop out a couple ice cubes and it's ready for you and then, and that's where the, the stock comes for the, the stock, next the time. next one and that's what I, i'll save what's left and i'll inject the next brisket with it boy and that's thinking in advance right there for the brisket that you're cooking Absolutely. now for next time when and you're if you cooking. do it right you'll have enough that can go you know you'll have enough for maybe three or four briskets so. okay now once you get this injected Mm -hmm. which I see you've got it pretty well injected yep. now and about how much you're putting in there just till you go around and yeah I go around uh, there's some people that are kind of crazy about it and they go every inch and every inch um, the way the fibers are in the meat it's gonna travel where it wants to anyway right it's gonna squirt out where it wants to I just got you a second oh, ago. yeah I'm it's, 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 licking it's, that. it's gonna happen and um, so I just go till I'm happy and when I'm happy I'll stop um, I've got the the flat where I want to impart most of the flavor, I spend more time on the flat than I do the point. Okay. The point has so much fat in it, you're gonna get a lot of flavor from that too. So I'm, I'm actually pretty satisfied on, on the injecting part of it. And um, now what we need to do is, is we need to be able to keep away, to keep our, our dry rub on there. And so um, a couple schools of thought, some people use Worcestershire sauce and some people just use an everyday brand yellow mustard. Uh -huh. You will never taste the mustard. It's gone. That flavor just disappears and you're left with just the rub. But that's making your rub stick to that, it. That sticks to it. And you I can like use Worcestershire that. or I like mustard. That. I like so, that. So I yeah. guess we can go ahead and put some rub Absolutely. on there. Absolutely. We can definitely do that. So Now you said we're cooking a, a an hour and a half per per pound at 225 hour and a half okay so we started with a 17 pounder mm -hmm. we took off three to four pounds mm -hmm. so we looking at 12 13 pounds mm -hmm. 14 mm -hmm. yeah so that's uh 18 hours that'll be at roughly least 18, 18 hours, hours 18 to 20 hours yeah that's almost like finger painting there when that, absolutely it is <laughs> and uh you know uh this is this is kind of one of the, some people are grossed out by this, but you know it, I consider it art. You know, well, if you do it right, it's gonna it's gonna come out and taste good. And you know, the, like I was showing you there, I, the camera won't be able to see it, but right here between the flat and the point, I always put a little bit and then spread some rub in there, and that gives it extra flavor. Also. Okay, well that's a neat medium to hold your absolute rub to it. Absolutely. Now, now the rub is this something you make? That's something I, I started making about thirty years ago. I've got it kind of where I want. I have three different rubs that I use. Um, this one is kind of designed for brisket and beef. I have uh, 
uh, one generic one that I call my kind of my Cajun rub, and then I have one for pork also. Do you want me to shake some? Sure, knock yourself out. I'll go ahead and rub it while you shake it. You tell this me. Is, this is one of those things. Better, more is better. Oh. So don't don't skimp on the rub. We we make enough that we can we can put as much on it as we want, and you just get that rubbed in there. And look, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this flat. All up. right. You see how you get that oh, flavor yeah. in there, and you can kind of see the juices coming out from the. All right, you can put more on there. Come on. Let her have let, it. Let her, let her have bring it, it in there. there. there bring go. it in there. Let her have it. All right, bro. I'll give me some down here on this end if you don't mind. Just covered. I, I get about an eight to a quarter of an inch. So you're not going to really touch it. It's, you're not going to try to rub this now. No, I'm it's gonna, sticking. I'm going to press it down into the mustard. And then when I come back, I look and I see if I have any. Then I'll come back and I'll throw some on there. And I, I mean, it just, it, more is better. That's, okay. This is what helps create the bark. A lot of people uh, don't understand that term. But basically, when this is done, it's going to look like a meteor. And then, you know, you've got that good smoke bark the the i put a small amount of sugar in here um all of that caramelizes and turns into this wonderful bark that really gives the brisket a lot of flavor so we're gonna go ahead and flip this bad boy over right all right now. all right y'all we got it injected we got it seasoned we got the pit lit the next steps we fixing to get it on the pit so y'all hang on junior's meat market has everything you need when you're going to the camp tailgating or planning dinner we make our own cracklings, beef jerky, whole cut cheese, and sausage right here in the store. We also process deer and hogs. Junior's Meat Market has an abundance of groceries and frozen items, which include crab cakes, fried oysters, tilapia, and more. We have daily meat specials, and we cook plate lunches every other weekend. Stop by Junior's Meat Market today and bring home dinner. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com Hydraulic Fabrication and Repair, located in Santa Mar, Louisiana, has been in the repair business for over 37 years, specializing in chrome rods, hydraulic tubing, and new cylinders. The benefit of a fully stocked warehouse of seals and chrome rods puts you back in operation, in most cases, in three days or less. We make hydraulic hoses and manufacture cylinders, offering 24-hour service and also pickup and delivery. Give hydraulic fabrication and repair the opportunity to help your business. And remember, we can't fix it, it ain't broke! Gavis Hardware and Outdoor Cooking is two unique stores in one. The hardware department has everything you need to fix stuff right. The outdoor cooking section cannot be beaten. We have all the latest and greatest gadgets on the market. But also, we keep a large stock of the tried and tested cookware we've all come to love over the years. Coffee and biscuits every morning during the week, cooking demos on Saturdays, and customer service that will help you get the job done. RP Custom Trailers and Service is a fully stocked store for RV parts and accessories with essentials such as tank treatments, hoses, lenses, vents, power cords, cleaning supplies, and everything else your camper may need. Known for customized living quarters and horse trailers for over 18 years. We now specialize in RV insurance work. Talk to Ryan about how to prevent blowouts and oh yes, that leaky vinyl or rubber roof can be inspected and repaired also. Call or come by and see it all at RP Custom Trailers. Hole in the Wall Seafood is back open and better than ever with South Louisiana's cleanest and best tasting crawfish. Now offering catering and on-site crawfish and shrimp balls. Or just stop by to get live and balled crawfish, fresh and balled shrimp, blue crabs and local caught catfish, and your favorite corn potatoes and sausage. But don't forget those cracklings you've come to love. Hole in the Wild Seafood, where quality matters. All 
All right, y'all, we made it outside. We're at the pit. And this is an awesome pit. It's the ceramic pit, the green egg. It's the big green egg, the and, extra large. And we'll talk a little more about that. But what intrigued me, you cut a little tip off the end right here. Right. Once you uh, once you put your rub and you, your injection on there, um, you kind of kind of lose the ability to see how the fibers run inside of it. And then once you cook it and it turns into our meteor, um, you really it's kind you'll have to start picking at it. And instead of doing that, I cut a little flat piece here on the end, and that way I know if I stay true to that flat piece all the way across, I will be cutting across the grain across the whole uh, brisket. Gotcha. So that's just a little reminder of where it was. Absolutely. The before and after. Now, uh, so we're ready to go on the pit. This is ready to go on the pit. We've got a, a nice color on our rub, and we're ready to go. You a little over 200 here? Um, actually, I have a computer on there. We're sitting about 250 right now. 250. This is this is a little bit higher on here. Uh huh. Um, but I have a temperature probe that actually gives me on the grate, and we're shooting for 225. That's what we want to do for eight. 18 hours basically. Right. It, it will be 18 hours for the size of meat that we have today. We're going to go an hour and a half per pound at 225. Well, can I put it on the pit? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. You hold this one. Absolutely. All right, y'all. The old green egg. And I've cooked on one similar to this, mm -hmm. a different ceramic pit. If you notice, I have some water trays in here, uh -huh. and that just helps keep the humidity of the, the pit where I want it, also. Look at that. What? Now you got a fan blowing in here. There's a fan blowing in there that helps control the temperatures. The only thing on this one, we want to make sure that we don't have any of the edges within about two inches from the actual edge of the thing there. Okay. There you go. That's, so we want to give it a that, little push that's back. That's perfect right there. It would char too much? Yes. Or, yeah, because as it rolls up, it would catch the end of it. Okay, so we're ready to close it down? We're ready to close it up. All right. Tell me a little bit about the pit, bro, the ceramic pit. I, I have probably 14 pits. Um, I use anything from an offsetter to a barrel smoker. One of the things I like about the big green egg is that I can I can set it and I can walk away for a few minutes. If I do a brisket on an offset grill, every 30 minutes I have to turn it, flip it, uh, or and, and mop it. This way, with the water, with the rub that I have, maybe every four hours I'll look at it just to make sure wow. that I'm not burning anything. And technically, if I want, I can go to sleep at night. And let it go. So let it go. That computer on this thing will keep it within two degrees either way from where I set it all night long. As long as I have my fuel ratio right, it's all night long. Now, now something that people don't know mm -hmm. is you can shut this down and save your charcoal. Absolutely. That's one of the things that I really liked about it. I probably paid for my big green egg just in fuel savings. Once you close the top and close the bottom down there, within 30 minutes, it's the heat starting to dis dissipate. But the heat also, if people don't know, the amount of heat that you can get out of this. Right. You was telling me you can get to seven, nine hundred degrees. Seven to nine hundred degrees is not really hard to do, and it turns into one of the best pizza ovens you've ever tried in your life. Awesome. Absolutely, yep. And and that's and that's when you'd want to be at that high temperature. Yeah, seven hundred to... degrees at least. That that way it really flash flashes the top with heat and just lets that dough work it's what it does and it's and, perfect and what temperature would would, it, would you be high like that for a steak too um on a steak i do what's called a, res, a reverse sear and i actually get the steak to 135 degrees and then i pull the plate setter off and then i get it to seven or eight hundred degrees and then i sear it on one side on each uh, one minute on each side and it's the perfect steak well cool all right y'all the the power of tv is that uh, we don't have to wait 18 hours. That's right. He cooked an awesome brisket. That's right. Um, you started yesterday? I started yesterday about 2 o'clock, and it went till about 7 o'clock this morning. Wow. So we've got a brisket already ready. See, I don't have to wait 18 hours. That's right. Sit here and wait 18 hours. But uh, we've got side dishes. We've got some uh, baked beans. Baked beans and Parmesan garlic uh, smashed potatoes. Okay, y'all, we, we got the brisket on. We're fixing to check out the other food. Y'all hang on. It's fixing to get better. All right, y'all, we made it back inside, and we broke the sides out, and through the magic of TV, we have a brisket already made. Now, when I walked in, I started smelling these beans, bro. Tell me how you cook these beans. Um, you started with bacon, you told you me. You start off with two pounds of bacon, and you crisp it up pretty good. And then you have, I like Vidalia onions when you can get them in my beans. So uh, you start off with three large Vidalia onions, chop them up. I like chunks, so I don't chop them up very fine. 
Um, and then once you do that, you just kind of start adding your stuff. You got some Worcestershire sauce in it, um, some mustard. Um, there's two trends of thought on that also. Uh, you can use ketchup or barbecue sauce. Right. Um, you this said has, you like the barbecue. The, I like the barbecue sauce. This has ketchup and barbecue sauce in it. And so for the meats, we have some pulled pork and, and the bacon. Wow. Yeah. All right. And once that's all together, you put it in a Dutch oven. You put it in a Dutch oven and cook it for three hours. Yeah. Yeah. That's Y'all, right. and, and, and I don't know if you, you don't have smell of vision yet, but we're getting that. <laughs> But you, the smells, the depth, the flavor that's come from this cooking that black iron pot is amazing. Mm-hmm. I love a black iron pot. It's the best way to go. Now, the potatoes, mm-hmm. tell us how you go with the potatoes. You started with a russet potato? Russet potatoes are, I've found to be the best for smashed potatoes. Um, and then you go with, uh, um, for this one, it was about seven pounds of potatoes, uh, 32 ounces of heavy cream, and about a pound and a half of Parmesan and the equivalent of about 12 cloves of garlic. So it's garlic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When I first came in the house, y'all, I Mm -hmm. came in and I I, I smelled the beans, but then he Mm -hmm. said, smell these potatoes. And then the first thing I caught was the garlic, and then you can smell that cream in there. Mm -hmm. And and that makes it really, really rich. Garlic and cream works very well because they're kind of rich, both of them are. So when you incorporate those two together, it, it just works. Cool. All right. Looks like we're ready to get down Absolutely. to business right here. Absolutely. We'll start yep. doing a little carving. All righty. That's a beautiful. And you did say meteor. Yes. So that, and it does look like a meteor, doesn't it? And so, you'll hand me that plate right I, there. I can sure. have something to put the meat on here. And I guess as you start cutting, uh, this would be the same as a competition brisket this would right be very very close to a competition brisket and in which they incorporate the smoke yeah. ring this is called chef's privilege so i'm gonna go ahead and let you try that right there well i'm gonna have to and i see the try. smoke ring absolutely on it. yep let me see what now, please tell me how much barbecue sauce you need with that none thank you very much that's what i want to hear zero that's what i want to hear there that that that's what i like here in there so that that is 18 hours of love right that's there right. that's 18 i don't hours taste any mustard nope no, I, you don't taste the the, the applicator uh, for some reason i don't know what it is but through the process of the smoking and the cooking the mustard of the worcestershire sauce disappears and all you taste is the meat which is the first thing for me is i want you to taste the meat I don't like my spices or my smoke to, to, over, to overcompensate for themselves and destroy the taste of the meat. But I guarantee you, you got that meat on, you're, you're tasting the meat, aren't you? I am. That's really good. <laughs> I didn't, and, and the smoke, the yes. thick smoke is yes. what, what I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Now, how thick should you slice brisket? Um, you should be able to slice a smoked brisket between an eighth and a quarter. Um, and it'll still be very, very tender. If you do more of a roast brisket, I can go a quarter to half an inch and melt in your mouth. Because that had the, the, the fat juice. The fat in juices it. in it, right. Man, yep. y'all, this is good. Okay, y'all, we got some slice. We got the food out here. We're fixing to make some plates, mm-hmm. and we're going to really get down and eat mm-hmm. some food. So y'all hang on. Hydraulic Fabrication and Repair, located in Santa Maria, Louisiana, has been in the repair business for over 37 years specializing in chrome rods, hydraulic tubing, and new cylinders. The benefit of a fully stocked warehouse of seals and chrome rods puts you back in operation, in most cases, in three days or less. We make hydraulic hoses and manufacture cylinders, offering 24-hour service and also pickup and delivery. Give hydraulic fabrication and repair the opportunity to help your business. And remember, we can't fix it, it ain't broke! Hole in the Wall Seafood is back open and better than ever with South Louisiana's cleanest and best tasting crawfish. Now offering catering and on-site crawfish and shrimp balls. Or just stop by to get live and balled crawfish, fresh and balled shrimp, blue crabs and local caught catfish. And your favorite corn potatoes and sausage. But don't forget those cracklings you've come to love. Hole in the Wall Seafood, where quality matters. Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking is two unique stores in one. The hardware department has everything you need to fix stuff right. The outdoor cooking section cannot be beaten. We have all the latest and greatest gadgets on the market. But also, we keep a large stock of the tried and tested cookware 
we've all come to love over the years. Coffee and biscuits every morning during the week, cooking demos on Saturday, and customer service that will help you get the job done. RP Custom Trailers and Service is a fully stocked store for RV parts and accessories with essentials such as tank treatments, hoses, lenses, vents, power cords, cleaning supplies, and everything else your camper may need. Known for customized living quarters and horse trailers for over 18 years. We now specialize in RV insurance work. Talk to Ryan about how to prevent blowouts and oh yes, that leaky vinyl or rubber roof can be inspected and repaired also. Call or come by and see it all at RP Custom Trailers. Junior's Meat Market has everything you need when you're going to the camp, tailgating, or planning dinner. We make our own cracklings, beef jerky, whole head cheese, and sausage right here in the store. We also process deer and hogs. Junior's Meat Market has an abundance of groceries and frozen items which include crab cakes, fried oysters, tilapia, and more. We have daily meat specials and we cook plate lunches every other weekend. Stop by Junior's Meat Market today and bring home dinner. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com All right, y'all. We finally got it played it all up. First off, I'm going to say, bro, awesome job. Awesome job. Thank you. I, I don't know what the poor people's doing right now, but I'm feeling rich That's right good. now. That's good. I like that. It, it's it's really good. I, I want to taste some more uh, while we're while we're mm -hmm. showing everybody these great awesome plates that we mm -hmm. got here. But y'all, but the the depth in these beans and the potatoes are priceless. But mm -hmm. to get that that brisket flavor, like I was saying, mm -hmm. that that's just amazing, y'all. Absolutely. I love your sign you got too. The uh, friendships are free. That's right. Because when you taste some food like this, I mean, mm -hmm. you'll remember this. Like we were talking about, you'll remember this flavor forever. Mm -hmm. So uh, life's life's great, y'all. And and <laughs> and eating the brisket with a fork's cool. Mm -hmm. But I'm one of them pick it no. up, and eat it, y'all. I with want. I want to get some of that. Shipping and handling free. Man, that's good, you like bro. That, huh? We're gonna have to get together again. Sure, absolutely. We'll definitely have to get together again and cook something else. Maybe I'll invite you over to my house and you All can right. cook at my house. We'll cook something sure. else. Absolutely, be glad to do that. Well, uh yeah, I had a great time doing this. It, it's been a blast. I say we have a toast. And uh nothing better than good friends and good food. Absolutely. Hey, y'all. We fixing to eat. So I want to thank y'all for watching Cajun Living and Cooking, and we'll check y'all next week. Absolutely.